What's up dudes, Max here, back with an update to the biggest question everyone has had ever since the launch, or even pre-launch of Mortal Kombat 11. What did the patch do, and is it getting better? For a little bit of history, I've made a video about this before, but it's not that big of a secret that Mortal Kombat 11's progression system is some of the most, uh... Some of the most unhelpful and time-consuming and unfun of many games I've ever played, much less a fighting game. It takes many similar practices to mobile games and essentially think of Injustice 2, but actually a lot worse and a lot more time-consuming. So of course this has been the biggest critical point for everyone that has been playing Mortal Kombat 11, especially when the game is being reviewed on Steam or in user reviews on Metacritic. The game is getting review bombed, and that's actually for pretty good reason. Uh, this progression system was very rough, and it needed a patch as soon as possible. There was a small fix that came earlier in the week where the characters you were fighting lowered in difficulty because things were so aggressively difficult with all the modifiers and everything. And with that one patch, it became a lot more manageable. It became much easier to actually finish these accomplishments because with the way it was at launch and for the first couple of days, it was just so hard to make any money. It was so hard to actually open any of these chests. And luckily, that was what this patch was specifically targeted for. So I'm going to talk about what it was what I was kind of dealing with, because in, in all honesty, I've gotten through most of my progression in the crypt with the pre-patch way and sort of just grinded it out. And it's taken approximately 60 hours or so of just watching my AI do nothing but fight characters in this game. But I did learn a lot as a result of it and different ways that you can earn money and things I'll have to make separate videos about. But in concerns to the patch, the big thing that it did, it gives you more rewards. I think it boosted the rewards of the overall currency, the regular coins, up about 20 to 25% across the board. So you just make more money off of almost everything you do. The dragon challenges, which were useless before because, because they only gave you 100 coins, now give you 1,000. So that's a decent amount to try to actually do the dragon challenges. And when you eventually complete these things, your AI completing fights is the exact same. The patch did say that there was AI adjustments made, but everything that I've seen for Noob Cybot having, you know, 30 combos and 30 reversals slash rushdown, he's pretty damn effective at whooping the crap out of the AI for a very long time. So that's where the majority of my time or the majority of the time I've seen the game spent is between the towers, unlocking things, going through the Towers of Time, finding a new Towers of Time, and getting that stuff done as soon as possible. The other big thing is hearts. Before, hearts is one of the most rare currencies. You get them to unlock boxes for your character, these Shao Kahn boxes that cost 250 hearts. And those aren't unique for everybody. Those are actually one of the few random elements in the crypt that is the same across the board. So if you're looking at getting these chests, they have set rewards for some characters, and there's apparently, or approximately like one chest for every single character in the game, spread throughout the entirety of the crypt, and you can actually look up guides on that now because we've opened them all up. There's a couple of other 100 heart chests that have some sort of random really good items, but those guarantee the fact that you're gonna be getting these things, and that's one of the most refreshing things, is just some things in the crypt should be guaranteed, and there are some high value boxes, especially late game crypt and in those 250 heart boxes that are gonna be the same for everybody. So we've had the chance to learn this stuff. We've had a chance to figure out what is in there, what is random, and how long is it going to take? And yes, they're being a little bit more, uh, they're putting a little bit more effort in terms of how much currency you're going to earn, which is nice. I believe fatalities now give you three hearts, brutalities give you five, and no mercies add an extra three, or mercies, add an extra three on top of that, so you can potentially get eight hearts per match. That's cool. But overall, the progression system is still an absolute grind fest. The difficulty in the towers has been adjusted. It's a lot more enjoyable and fun and manageable than it was before, with some towers being kind of hard and you have to pay attention to what you're doing instead of just constantly going in. You kind of need to look at the modifier and counter it, and then if you have that proper counter, you're gonna be doing pretty good but it doesn't solve the fact that a lot of the things that you're looking for in the crypt are completely random. Everyone still kind of says the thing that this game is just to get you to do microtransactions. It's not, and I'll, I'll explain this again, it's not. It's just that the progression system is there to take a lot of time, and specifically to take a lot of time, especially in character towers where you have to do 75 brutalities for some reason. You have to do 100 crushing blows, and to the later ones, 150 Fatal Blows, and no kidding, you have to reset the stats every single time when you do one of these towers. It's there just specifically to take a shit ton of time. 
And that's still the pill that's hard to swallow. But I can tell you that there at least is a point where I want to make some money and I want to go unlock this thing or I want to do this and I have a goal to get to this area or, you know, find this. That's actually possible now. Like, before it was so difficult and it took so much grinding that it was, so much AI grinding even, that it was, it was all I was doing with this game for the first, like, week it was out. And yeah, I've, I've put like 70 to 75 hours into it so far. And that's not me personally playing, that's me kind of like babysitting the AI and letting the AI do grind fests to get money and currency. So the only thing, and the, one of the big issues I see right now is that hearts seem to be a bit more uh, comparable than before. You can kind of get more and acquire more, uh, more than ever before. So getting those boxes is a lot easier, but the thing that seems to be just as difficult is green orbs. And there's a lot more green orb spires all over the map. You need green orbs to unlock specific quests, like things cost 2,000 to 3,000 to 10,000 in some situations to actually continue the crypt. And that's kind of painful, man, uh, because there's not many ways for you to increase the amount of green, uh, green souls. I'm sorry, I might have said green hearts. Green souls that you get for your third currency. So right now the game gives you modifiers so you can earn more coins in towers that are pretty easy to find. They give you these different like items that you can put on towers to give you more hearts. And I've been using those and it's been great because I've been earning a lot of these things and most of my crypt adventure is actually done. But even after the end of it, like, after unlocking almost every single thing in the crypt, there is still a holy crap ton of items on characters that I don't have. There's going to be a ton of items on characters that is specific to the towers, and the t certain times the towers might be available. And the other big thing is that inside the crypt, there are elements that are somewhat random. They want you to refill boxes. They want you to go into these chests and spend money to get the chests to come back, because you're not going to get gear out of those, most likely. There's a good chance the chests that you paid to respawn are going to have items for you to craft things. And crafting things is where you end up getting some of the extra gear. I think that's where a lot of the gear is going to be hidden, behind the craftable items, behind going to the collector and finding what the collector has to trade, you know, your crafted items for stuff that he has. That's essentially how that economy sort of works. And then if you run out of items, you need more boxes to open. And if all the boxes are gone, you got to drop maybe 50,000 bucks to respawn 50 chests. I'm starting to see that cycle. That's the end game cycle of the crypt and it takes a while to get there. I would say before it took like 60 hours to get to the near end game, but now it probably is gonna take half as much. Uh, I, I think the overall pricing of everything and how generous more currency is and how much easier it is to accomplish some of this stuff, it's just gonna make it a lot better to actually make your way through and hopefully get things for your characters because ultimately there's not a lot of control of what you can get for your character, which is my biggest gripe. And the final, final thing that is like the, the thing that's gonna make the crypt take a long time is this statue. You go to this statue and you're able to put in a uh, thousand to a hundred thousand coins. And this is specifically here when you don't have anything else to do in the crypt or you've opened up all the coin boxes. You can essentially run a slot machine, which is what this thing is, and it's going to give you a random really good item or if you spend lesser amounts, not as good items. I think if you spend 50,000 or below, it can be like maybe augments or artwork or, you know, something like that. 75K on average is gear. So you get like masks or you get the uh, the different sort of like modifiers for your characters, the three different gear pieces. And then over 100,000, or if you put in 100,000, you can get skins. And the majority of the time, it seems to be a very high percentage, I get skins whenever I drop 100,000 coins into this thing. So that's kind of a reliable method to get skins, but it essentially is still, you know, a giant loot box, a giant slot machine that you're playing to run the game. And that's where I think a lot of the skins are. I think a lot of the, the remaining items that you might not have after completing most of the crypt are in the collector with all the different, you know, consumable, not consumable, but like tradable items that you get through crafting them at that one big fire furnace. And then ultimately the big shrine that you put money into to pull the lever and then get random rewards. So here's the thing. I don't think that's great. I think it's a lot better than it was before. And I wish the progression system was good because before it was like a three or a four. Like just so, it was so aggressively painful considering how awesome the crypt is. Like I've spent so much time in the crypt looking for secrets and stuff that I absolutely love it. It's just everything around the way it functions just hurt it so much. So I'd probably put my, like if I had a rate at a one out of 10, before it was like a three or something like that, then I'd probably put it to be like a six. The progression system for your characters still really sucks. If you want to get specific things for your characters, it's going to take a lot of time because you don't have much control over it. 
and the ones that you do have control over, the specific towers, have parameters that will take so long and are so grindy that you just have to do the same simple process of like the first fight of a tower for hours and hours and hours to eventually fulfill one of the requirements of like four. Dude, that is not, that shit is very rough. I, I ultimately hope that a lot of the rewards you get with like green orbs and coins and hearts uh, extend themselves to online a little bit more. I think playing online should reward you more than playing towers. I feel that towers right now are a bit too high in requirement, and especially those character towers where you are specifically going for, you know, crushing blows, fatal blows, everything like that, the one that's really, like, painfully, painfully long to finish, the requirements for that should absolutely be online as well. Because most of the time I've spent on this game has been focusing on these towers, and I should be playing online. I should be doing this extra stuff, but I feel like I'm missing out on these amazing opportunities to get this extra cash in this one thing, to unlock this brutality in this character here. And that's the thing I've been targeting myself the most, is brutalities, because I think that stuff actually affects gameplay. So, here's how you fix it. Here is, here's Max's solution for how I would personally adjust the crypt, how I would personally adjust uh, gear and modifiers in this game. What I would do is keep the majority of items in the crypt the same. The way you acquire chests, the locations of chests, some being like set for everybody and most of them being random at all, I think is okay. As long as the the reward for those can be really good. You can get something that's worth a huge amount out of a chest that's not that great, which is a nice little like RNG thing to play. But what there should be is in the gear screens, in the screens that show you the 30 to 40 different pieces of gear for the character, the screens that show the 60 different pieces of skins on average for every character, the intros, the brutalities, I feel that those should have coin amounts next to them or heart amounts or soul amounts, something. Those should be purchasable at any point. And if you want to go to the crypt and sort of run the gamut of like randomly getting something, you can do that. And you can potentially, you know, have it be cheaper than what it usually is. For example, like if we said the skin was 150,000 coins, you know, I actually think that's not even that bad. Like that, that might be worth it for the majority of skins. It seems like it's expensive, but it's something that's within arm's reach that you can actually acquire instead of just being like, well, this is going to be done in like, a week, maybe, if I play eight hours a day. So I think that'd be a, a, a that'd be the ultimate way to fix this for a lot of people. It takes the random element out of everyone's game plan because right now I like the fact that the towers are more fun and enjoyable than they were when the game first came out by a by a country mile. It's just that random element is still going to be a thing that is going to be grinding at people so much. And if it was the fact that you can just buy these things with your in-game currencies and all of them cost different amounts of in-game currencies, and hell, some of them maybe you can't get. Some of them maybe are locked to towers and you have to wait for the tower. I understand that. I understand that I better keep my eye out and have my friends keep an eye out that there's a cool noob cybot tower or whatever, and there's a neat skin in there and I have to wait for that. I think that's a fair trade. So, like I said, this system is not the best. The crypt is absolutely awesome. The Towers of Time are relatively fun for the most part, but still have some very aggressive stuff that you kind of have to solve and figure out and have friends for in co-op and hopefully they know what's going on. It's it's all a bit daunting still, but like I said, it's about a 6 out of 10 now. It's much more functional than it was before. And this is unfortunate that all of this kind of had to happen in Mortal Kombat 11 because the online for this game is absolutely amazing. I need to make a full review at some point. The, the actual netcode in this game is some of the best I've run into in any fighting games. The roster of characters is pretty interesting so far. I hope there's going to be more, but right now every character I've played has been pretty fun. And I really enjoyed the story mode, so all things considered, I hope they have plans to just sort of address this. I think the way the, the towers are right now and the, the currency earning is fine. I think they've done a pretty good job with balancing that out outside of being a little difficult to get green souls now. The only other big issue is the fact that everything else is random, and that random element is what bugs a lot of people. That's where the game feels like it's super grindy. That's where you get that feeling of, I'm just grinding out for this, and I can't even see the end in sight. I don't even know if all the game will allow me to get the brutality for this character. I don't even know if the game will allow me to get the maskless variations of some characters that are some of the coolest looking versions of those characters. Just good luck if you're ever gonna see that because it's tied behind random elements. Either way, that's what I think of it right now. I think this game has been a lot of fun. I've actually enjoyed discovering things in the crypt and unlocking this process. It was really rough at the start, and I would say not worth it considering how bad it was when it first came out and how difficult it was to beat any of these towers. I think the parity between all systems is great. I'm gonna actually try out the PC version very soon to see how that's running. 
And if you guys haven't yet, you can claim a big amount of coins, a big amount of souls, and a big amount of hearts that they're just giving for free up until May 5th. So I I think it's good that they put this effort in. I think Netherrealm Studios, it's good that they made these adjustments as quickly as possible, but it's not quite there yet. And I can see a future where everyone will kind of be happy with the way this is, but it's not going to change the, the negative stigma the game has and the way it came out. So I think you guys should try it. I think it's worth checking out at least a little bit if you want to look into getting some stuff for characters. But the meat and bones of this game, the place where it really shines, is a well-executed story mode and it's, uh, it's online versus. So check that out because all of that is actually really good. Except for the fact that you can't do custom variations in Ranked. We'll talk about that later! As always, dudes, thank you a ton for watching. My name is Max and I'll see you next time.